Today, we're gonna pay homage to our presidents. We're gonna honor one of my favorite presidents, President Theodore Roosevelt. He led the first United States volunteer cavalry during the Spanish-American War, and his unit was known as the Rough Riders. Today, there will be no signature blades in your signature style. Instead, we'll be giving you a piece of W1 round stock from which to forge this. A Rough Riders buoy issued to everyone in the Rough Riders unit. Today, you'll be making exacting copies of that blade. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your three hours starts now. My name is Dan Berlotos. I'm from Taylorsville, Kentucky. I am a metallurgical engineer. I really look at metallurgy and material science and being an engineer as kind of the other side of the same coin as bladesmithing. Bladesmithing is very important to me because it is this perfect blend of art and science and skill. The power hammer is a fantastic piece of equipment, but it is really, really easy to get carried away. And while hammering, I see something at the very last two inches of my blade. It's a cold shot. The best thing to do is to just get the angle grinder out and grind off that excess. I grind away the cold shot. It's a little deeper than I'm expecting, but I still have a good amount of material there. But I had to stretch out a little bit more material than I was comfortable with. So now I'm looking at a heat treat on an edge that's a little thinner than I had wanted. So I think to myself, I need to edge quench, and that's it. Dan can go for an edge quench, which is very clever. My name is John Sims. I'm a 21-year-old hobbyist bladesmith. When I'm foraging, I'm just in my own little world. Being a quiet and softer-spoken individual, people tend to think that I'm I'm really not. Just come approach me. I'll talk to you for hours. I have to reach this two-inch width requirement. So I'm working off the side of the dies, just widening everything really nice. I'm going to continue to spread this material out a little more until I get just over the two-inch mark so I have meat to play with when I go to the grinder. John's blade looks alarmingly short. Just have to hope that I can stretch it enough to make the length requirements. I'm at the grinder. I've hogged off all the material I think I need to hog off before I quench my blade. Being that I don't have a lot of experience with W1, I'm not sure what it's going to react to the quench like. Feeling kind of apprehensive, kind of nervous. I do not want this to go wrong. After the quench, I check the blade for straightness. It, it's fairly straight. I don't see any major warps. My name's Josh Nicolaitis. The reason why I started bladesmithing is because I was practicing a lot of survival skills, and all the store-bought knives that I had just turned out to be junk, so I figured I could make my own. My friends would describe me as the goofy redneck from down the road. I would describe me as the goofy redneck down the road. So Josh is drawing his steel out lengthwise. So you really want to fuller it to width. What are the best ways to fuller here? Blue has fullering dies, and you have to guard it from right angles to how you use it, which isn't happening. Working my steel, I'm feeling good about the length, and then it dawns on me that I have to make this two inches wide as well. Josh, he's been struggling a little bit, trying to make the width. He now has a very thin blade. He's at the grinder. I'm in a mad dash to get this done, and time's flying by. So now I'm getting ready to quench this W1 steel. Josh is in the quench right now. I'm looking at it, and I can tell that there is a warp to it. I forged it out too thin, trying to meet that two-inch wide parameter, and I've picked up a warp. Three, two, one. Blade Smith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This first round of competition is over. All right, Blade Smiths, it's time to turn your blades into fully functional Rough Rider buoys by attaching handles to them. We provided you each with buffalo horn scales from which to construct your four pin coffin handle blades with file work liners and brass guards with lobes. Good luck. Your three hour starts now. I cut out the brass, and now what I need to do is make a slot for my tank. I need to put some decorative file work on the brass liners. Dan is uh, just going at his file work with that Dremel. Now I need to start gluing all of my pieces together. I'm relying on it to be curing while I'm sharpening my blade. I have to put a guard on this uh, knife with lobes. My guard at the moment is a little long. I know I need to remove material on it. I have up my guard. Uh-oh. John just did something wrong. Oh, boy. 
I cut off all of this material on one side instead of both. I don't have enough material to make a lobe on one side. My guard isn't shaped. I don't have these lobes. It's probably still too long. So I have to go to the grinder, rough in these lobes, and then rough in the handle. It doesn't look exactly like the Rough Rider buoy, and it's a replication challenge. I'm kind of shaking in my boots at this point about it. I know I have issues in my tank. It's entirely too long. So I take it over to the angle grinder, and I chop a big piece off. I get all the measurements drawn onto my piece of brass for my guard. I drill some pilot holes so that I know where I need to get my tang through. I'm grinding away on this handle, and I realize I have a gap between my handle material and my guard. Oh, my guard just came loose. I've got epoxy everywhere. Yep, thankfully, it's in the gap where I need it to be. I'm done. I'm going to step back from it. That's, it is what it is. It's all I can do to it. Five, four, three, two, one. Blade Smiths, drop your tools, stop what you're doing. This second round of competition is over. I'm looking at my competitors' blades, and mine just doesn't look as pretty. I'm hoping that it'll outperform theirs, and maybe the looks will come second. Blade Smiths, welcome to the strength test, the moose antler chop. Remember, this test is all about what the antler does to your buoys and not what the Rough Rider buoys do to these moose antlers. Dan, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. I'm really worried about the moose antler chop because it's such a brittle, hard material, and it can crack or dent an edge very, very easily. Dan, first things first, this edge held up perfectly. There's no flinting, rolling, chipping. One small issue, there's a little piece of the handle that comes up right here, and it's sharp. In general, really well done. Thank you. John, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. There are gaps in my handle, and that could pose some issues. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking that the handle could just fly apart. John, a couple things happened. First and foremost, your guard is, is quite loose. In the testing, your edge took a roll that you can hear here. In all, I mean, it's, it's one knife instead of two, which is great. And uh, it's got a great look to it, so well done. Thanks, sir. Josh, you're up. You ready? Does it matter? No. So they tested Dan's blade. They tested John's. John's took a little bit of damage, but nothing that was catastrophic. Now they're on the mine, and I'm worried. Good job, man. Well, Josh, first things first, there's some serious gaps on both sides between the handle material and the guard. Aside from those issues, the blade held up perfectly. Well done. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to the sharpness test the fish slice. Dan, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Well, we got four stakes out of it. Beautiful job. It is sharp. There was a spot here on the guard. It could have been smoothened out, but it did not affect the use of your blade. The balance of your blade is good, and most importantly, it will cut. Good job, sir. Thank you. John, you ready? Yes, sir.
right, John, let's talk about your Rough Rider Bowie right here. First up, on the first cut, didn't cut all the way through. I just ran out of blade. But on the subsequent cuts, it is sharp. And overall, sir, your blade, it will cut. Thank you, sir. All right, Josh, your turn. You ready? Do it to it. Let's do it. All right, Josh, let's talk about your blade here. First up is the handle. It feels like it should be held this way because it's offline. And in one of the cuts, it did affect the way I was indexing. I hit with the guard and then into the blade. But this is a sharp blade and it will cut. That's awesome, that's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> blade Smiths, we asked you to make Rough Rider buoys to honor President Theodore Roosevelt. The judges' deliberation is complete. They've made a final decision. Only two of you can move forward into the finale. One of you bladesmiths has to leave the forge. The bladesmith leaving the forge is... John. Your blade didn't make the cut. David Baker's gonna tell you why. John, this decision came down to the strength test in which your blade picked up a rolled edge and a loose guard, making it the only blade that took any damage. John. Please surrender your buoy. My only real regret is that the handle just didn't hold up, the guard didn't hold up. I would have worked better on the handle. I came here to prove to myself that I am working down the right path of my craftsmanship. And I believe I've proved that to myself under these conditions. 